Well, as we begin our uh, sermon today, we're going to be primarily using um, the book of Isaiah. Uh, We're going to be looking at uh, chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. Uh, So if you will open up your your Bibles or use your bulletins. And um, what I'm going to have you do is uh, get a pen out because you're going to circle some things. And some things may um, provide be very interesting for you today, I think. Um, Last week, I preached a sermon uh, primarily about walking in the light of the Lord and how we walk in the light of the Lord. And I spoke um, about the difficulty of that in our world today uh, as we have um, so many divisions around us, black and white and rich and poor, um, those who are for welfare, those who are against welfare, those are all kinds of divisions that are occurring And yeah, I got a little bit political last week. Um, I don't do that very often, but I felt like it was necessary that we need to walk in the light of the Lord as we walk with Christ in our lives and that we come to the middle of uh, the church or the middle of life and we walk uh, behind Christ uh, who is in front of us at all times. And so today what I want to do is I want to continue in this um, season of Advent as we took about, talk about walking the light of the Lord, which was our first candle, and then second candle the, um, is up more about peace, and um, I don't know anybody in here who doesn't want to walk more in peace, more in the very presence of God, and so um, that's the whole theme for today, and it certainly is a theme of this passage as we're going to look at it as it unfolds. So as we begin to look at it, what I want to do is um, uh, take a look at three different um, visions, if you will, uh, in the scripture here um, that Isaiah is putting forth for us and for people who are going to be looking for the Messiah, because Advent is all about looking for the Messiah to come. And many of you are starting to put Christmas trees up and do all that kind of stuff around your house. And I hope you have a a crash somewhere. And I hope Jesus isn't in the manger yet because he's not there yet. And you're waiting and we're waiting. I know some of you are going home to take him out. I know that. (laughs) I, I, I just felt that coming my way. And so as you remove Jesus from your crash, knowing that he's coming, Um, you want to look at Advent as the preparation for the one who comes. And that's what we're doing right now, waiting for the one who comes. So in this, there are three visions, if you will, for this Advent season. The first one begins in the very first line of 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 the scriptures, and it says, there shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse. There'll come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse. So, so what's this all about? Um, <clears throat> if you're a good Jew, you understand this um, because you remember Jesse um, had a bunch of children and his younger child was named David. And David became king, remember? And all of the prophecies about who Jesus is have to come through King David's line, all right? So when we begin to think about this, the this, this shoot that comes from the stump of Jesse is the concept that, that Jesus is the one who's coming from the line of Jesse to David to Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, because he has to have that lineage, okay? Um, so when you begin to hear the, the term Jesse's son or the stump of Jesse, and you look at the last line that says, on that day, the root of Jesse, who shall stand as a signal for the peoples of him that shall inspire nation, nations and choir, and his resting place shall be glorious, speaking of heaven. Are you, are you, you, I mean, there's a lot in this passage real quick. So we got this shoot. Of the stump of Jesse, that's your first. You might want to circle that, put a one there. And that's the first vision. The second vision is this. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Now, I'm going to save that for a couple minutes because that's where the whole sermon's going to be today. All right? So the spirit of the Lord is going to rest upon 
Jesus. And the Spirit of the Lord is going to rest upon all who follow him. Are you catching that? I'm going to leave that there for a minute. I'm going to go to the third vision of what this, this kingdom is going to be like of peace. And the third part of that kingdom is in verse 6. It says, the wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the lion, and the fattened calf together. And a little child, Jesus, will lead them. Now, many of you see this vision all of a sudden of of animals that should not be hanging out together. They, they should not be together because in normal circumstances, those animals are going to kill each other. I mean, that's just the reality of it. And it reminds me of a situation that happens about 5 o'clock every evening at our house. We have a cat and we have a dog. And I, I have to record this because it's hilarious. And about 5 o'clock in the evening, one of the animals will look to the other one. And the other one will look at the other one. And it's battle on. And what ends up, all of a sudden, you're looking at these two animals that, that are supposed to eat each other, begin to eat each other. I mean, they're after each other. They're tussling. And somebody comes by the house and they go, you let your dog do that? And all of a sudden, you see the cat come up and go, bop, yep. And, and, and you get this, this chaos that it consume, ensues for about 8 to 12 minutes in our house and then all of a sudden, they jump on the couch, and they sit together and go, ah, it's all over. The peaceable kingdom has occurred. And so, you know, you, 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 you maybe can't imagine this. I can see it all together. But the, the issue is this. As when the king of kings comes, the divisions shall cease. Divisions between rival gangs Rival animals, rivals that are the verses one to the other that we talked about last week. The rivals of black, white, poor, strong, uh, feminism, household uh, structures. All this stuff will come together when the king of kings comes. And that is a picture of the way we really want to see the world, isn't it? where peace reigns. Now, the problem with peace reigning is that the people, and the, well, the reality is, people, you and I, don't allow peace to occur. We get stuck in our own visions of eyes and ears, uh, our own hearing, and we bring about enormous division. We're just really, really good at it. And if any of you, I mean, you, you see that in your own world. And that's an issue in our own lives of sin. It's an issue in our own lives of the, the fallen nature that we have in our own lives. And so there's this, this hymn that we sing this time of year, and you, you probably have heard it. Rejoice, rejoice. It goes, O come, O come, Emmanuel. You know that one? And ransom captive Israel. And one of the verses say this, O come thou wisdom from on high, who orderest all things mightily, to lead us into the path of knowledge show, and teach us in the ways for her to go. See, we need to have the one who comes that gives us peace because we're not normally peaceful. And so we have to take some time in our lives and reflect on where we personally are bringing about division, where we personally are, 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 are fuming things up, if you will, in your own lives, in your own households, teenagers in your own schools, Facebook, wherever it is. And it's this king that is coming that will bring that peace. So I'm going to go to that second vision again for you. And that is in verse 2. And it says this, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. And here's the Spirit, what the Spirit of the Lord gives. And you want to circle these bad boys because they're awesome. 
the spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of counsel and a spirit of might, a spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. Now, when we begin to think about these, we want to realize that that in baptism, when you are baptized and brought into the family of God, we ask that the Holy Spirit ignite within you, fill up within you, and you are given these gifts. You are given these gifts of, of wisdom and understanding, counsel and might and knowledge and fear of the Lord. You are given these gifts, but the truth of the matter is we don't rely on them. So what I want to do today is talk a little bit about each of these gifts that I think we all want badly in our lives. And so let's go take a look at some of these for just a second. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. Wisdom consists of the choice of the best means to secure the best ends. So it it takes the totality of the, the total issues that are going on in life and heaps them all up and says, God will give you wisdom to get the best end of whatever you've got going on in life. And so I don't know how many of you all really, really want that in your life, that you, you want a, a sequence of events and, and, a, and a way to get what God wants for you and for your family and for this world. God's wisdom is what comes upon us. And then the next part of that is understanding. If you're not plugged into the one who's given the wisdom, how can you possibly understand the wisdom of God? And so as you and I are discerning and we're wanting to be those peaceful people, if you're going to use your own foolish ways, which is the absence of wisdom, you will end up with your own outcome, correct? And that own outcome doesn't necessarily look like peace. It looks like manipulation. It looks like chaos. It looks like all kinds of things. But when we see God's wisdom, he gives you a, a, a way to move through life in a way that is its best end. And the understanding that it's given to us is we're able to communicate with God in such a beautiful way that we, in fact, understand his wisdom and can translate it into our own lives. Is that helpful for anybody? Let's go on to the next two for a second. We go on that, we go on the spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of counsel and might. Counsel is judgment where you and I can discern our ways in intricate affairs. And so you get wisdom, and you know the end that you need to have, right? But counsel gives you the ability to order those in such a way that it happens. Let me give you an example. Some of you have lost loved ones or um, been in some trouble somewhere, and you didn't know how to get out of it. And so you went to a counselor, a lawyer, let's say, and he counseled you how to take the estate, if you will, and move it through a situation where you could, could, could close the estate in a way that was honorable. Does that make sense? Or some of you have had some things going on in your life, and you've come to me, and you, you've sought counsel, and we've prayed together, and we've sought God's end. We've sought God's way that he wants to sort it all out. And, and then order it in such a way through intricate affairs that it gets taken care of. Now, how many of you have not counseled when you needed to counsel? Not sought counsel when you needed counsel? How did it work out for you? It ended up that it was very disorderly, wasn't it? Because it was something from the inside gut of yourself and not a godly sense of clarity that would order those affairs. See, God likes order. He wants you and I to have order in our life. Why don't we seek his counsel? You know, the Jews would certainly have understood this um, because Isaiah, in the, in the, in the previous 
um, in the previous uh, uh, chapters. He says in, verse, in chapter 9, and if you want to open up Isaiah chapter 9, and you want to look at the, um, the sixth verse, Isaiah is already telling the people about this Christ child. He's saying, for to us a child is born. To us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called what? Wonderful Counselor. See, God knows what we need in Christ Jesus, that he will be the wonderful, which is robust and beautiful, Counselor that will be in our lives, that will give us clarity, and will help us through the intricate affairs of life. This is practical power. And so Isaiah already talks about it in chapter 9, verse 6. And it says this, and he will be called Mighty God. So we're given counsel and might when the Spirit of God comes upon us. And he is a wonderful counselor and mighty God. And that mightiness of God means it's the strength of God, the very strength of God to deal with very intricate, difficult times in life. And so we see that he's called wonderful counselor, mighty God, and we are given a spirit of counsel and might. Might we not seek that counsel. We go on just a little bit further, and it says the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. Knowledge and fear of the Lord. Knowledge has to do with getting the whole counsel of God, all the information that God can give you on a subject. And it's all in Scripture, but yet we don't go to the counsel. We don't go to the place of knowledge and grace. So God gives us his whole counsel, his whole knowledge as we look at scripture. As we sit in church and we hear the scriptures read and torn apart and examined, that is the whole counsel of God, the intricacies of God. Who does not want to know the intricacies of God? the vastness of God, the enormous nature of God, the power of God. Because when you begin to get the whole counsel of God, you begin to get all the intricacies of God, there's only one thing that can happen. Awe and reverence and fear of the Lord. How many of you have gone through something in life when all of a sudden you knew you needed to hit your knees? You knew you needed to hit your knees. You just could no longer stand in it. You knew that you needed to hit your knees. And as you hit your knees, you were understanding the awesome power of God and no longer could handle it yourself and needed to come to your knees where you understood with reverence the joy and the power of God. The Lord, that reverence is a fear of the Lord. It's not, a, it's not like you're going to get spanked or that you're going to get hurt. It's a fear of the Lord that it's so beautiful through his whole counsel, his whole knowledge that he's pouring into you that you can no longer just stand in it. You've got to go to your knees So during this season that you and I are in, might we pray for the Spirit of God to rest upon us? Might we pray this piece of Scripture right here, that the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, and if he rests upon him, he will rest upon his followers. And he will give us a spirit of wisdom and understanding. He'll give us a spirit of counsel and might. A spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. Might we pray 
that this wonderful counselor, this mighty God, everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. That's what Isaiah calls Jesus. That the Prince of Peace may give us peace, may give us clarity, may give us what we beg for. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Ron or whoever you are, that we may receive that sense of peace, walk in that sense of peace, and know of the reverence and power of God and fall on our knees in honor of the one who comes.